welcome to the Pink Ink Classroom. Come on in and let's get started. We're going to talk about piecing and shading paper today. It's one of my favorite techniques. It's shading but with a twist. There's some stamps that work better for paper piecing than others. And I'm just pointing these out to you. These are from Pink Ink Stamps and they all have one thing in common which is a slightly large area that you could use pieced paper on. Today I'm going to be focusing on this one. It's called Flowers for You and show how it's pieced with some different papers and how it's shaded to make it look more realistic and just add a little bit of pop to the piecing. Here's my examples right here of that stamp pieced with four different papers here. And now I want to talk about paper for just a little bit. So here are some different printed papers with text that could be used on that particular stamp. Now this is a piece of actual newsprint and here's an example of how it looks when it's finished. The problem with newsprint is even though this turned out pretty well it's kind of tricky to work with. It's thin, it tears easily, and it can get damaged when you cut it. So you might want to opt for some printed scrapbooking paper instead. These are some examples that I just grabbed from my own paper stash and you can use one that has colored text. This one's in reverse so it's black on white. And this is just an example. Sometimes you might want to turn a paper over, see what's on the back, because lo and behold I was able to stamp out this image on this little piece of text right here. So check out both sides and see what you can find. But all of these will work perfectly well. We're going to give them a little different color treatment as we as we do our different examples. Now the last thing I want to do for my show and tell is just let you take a look at this. This is my paper doll stamp and I have pieced this in a million different ways here and I actually separated the clothes and pieced them with two or three different papers. So this just to go, goes to show how far you can take paper piecing if you want to. But the technique I want to emphasize today is how to take this piecing and add a little bit of shading to it in some spots to make it look a little more dimensional. And that's what we're going to do now. The first one I'm going to do is a traditional black and white newsprint. Now you want to add some shading to it where the paper overlaps and folds. And this is going to make your pieced paper look more realistic and just add something to your image that helps it from looking too flat. So I'm going to start by adding some shading behind this point where the newspaper cone folds over and a little bit coming down here where it, it has a little bit of a dip. And then on the inside of this fold, and you kind of follow that down to this fold and that's going to definitely have some shading where it gets bunched together where the, the tie is. Then it bulges out here and then there's another fold on this side. I'm going to come up a little bit, catch this one here and darker right there where it indents. And now this piece is on top of this one so there would be some shading behind this section as well and maybe we continue it up a little bit on the edge. Now you want to follow it down where it's bunched underneath so the fold would continue down here as well and I'm just using a kind of a gentle little stroke and pulling it out just a wee bit darker to lighter as I go down and I'm not going to bother to shade it in here because all of this is going to get all cut off so we're just working on the paper the lower part of this paper cone. So darkest in here and back in here and then a little shading as it bunches down to the tie. Now the next one I want to do is the reverse of this. So this print is white type on black. So for this one we're going to use a white pencil and we're going to add highlighting this time. So we need to think about 
where we put the shadows in and shade it in reverse. So I'm going to start by shading where the paper bulges out. A little bit of that wrinkle, the middle of this section, and I'm kind of drawing a little triangle shape as it goes down to a, a bit of a point here. And then this bulge right here, and a little bit of shading along there. And maybe you carry that up into this section as well. I like to leave the edges darker. So don't take it all the way to the edge. And then we're going to shade it a little bit at the bunch part, but this time we're, we want to shade the part where it bulges out where, rather than the part that it gets tucked in. Maybe I'll just add a little bit in the middle there. So not a whole lot of shading on this. You can take a little bit up here, go around the leaf a little bit. It's a touch. This is very subtle on this one. But uh, it does give that black paper a little bit of dimensionality just by adding the shading. And you can see it really well when it's all put together like this. See how it works. It's a cool technique. Okay, for the last one, I'm going to show what it looks like to shade it in color. So the type on this is kind of a burgundy, so I'm going to use this Tuscan Red to shade this one. And again, we're back to working with dark shading on a light, lighter surface. So I'm going to go back and do the shadows, but this time with some color. And this works with any color type that you might find. Um, I have a blue example as well. And of course, although my examples are all with typography, you can certainly apply this shading technique to any little print that you use. If it's a little floral or a vine or a check or something like that, it all works just as well. Just always remember that you want to shade the, part, the, the parts that go back and leave the parts that are coming forward lighter. The shading principles are always the same no matter what pattern you're using. But I'm a real fan of this newsprint look, so that's what I've decided to use for my example here. So that uses a little bit of color, and it helps to emphasize the color of the type and just make it look a little bit different. Here again is the finished example of that one. And I just wanted to point out one more thing, because this is a brand new stamp. This is Cinderella Pumpkin, and I can't wait to stamp this on newsprint and start shading in all these little sections and see how that one looks. So here you can see the three different pieces I colored and how they all look when they're finished. It just adds something to this stamp that you can't get with pure drawing. By adding this piece of paper, you're adding an element of realism and making the stamp into something completely different. This is my technique for piecing and shading paper.